Hi, this is James from Tabletop Gaming Guild, and today we're going to talk about the RPG Big Eye Small Mouth Besom. We're going to go ahead down the table here. I'm going to show you what comes in this core rule book, because that's what we're going to go over specifically today. And then we'll come back and I'll give you my final thoughts. All right, so we're going to take a look at the Big Eye Small Mouth Role Playing 4th Edition game and what you're going to get with this core rule book. Now, a couple things I'll mention. Big Eyes Small Mouth has a rule book called Naked, which is a thin down version of this book to get you started faster. So if you're not sure about Big Eyes Small Mouth but would like to look into it and get started quickly, that's probably the book that you want to get. If you like, if you like that and you want to continue on, or you already know you're going to love this because you've played the previous editions of Big Eyes Small Mouth, this is the book you want to get. This is the core rule book. And Big Eye Small Mouth is basically going to be a D6 system. Now this D6 system, you're going to take two uh, dice, roll them, and add on the appropriate value. And if you meet what you need to, you're, you're going to get a success. The book starts out with an introduction on what is an anime, which I found very, very interesting. I will say that this game, this system is a very in-depth system on how to make a character and how it interacts with the uh, environment and it doesn't have to be an anime. You can set up characters here for just about anything. So even though Big Eye Small Mouth seems like it should be just animes, it is not. This can be pretty much if you want to have any cartoon world, period. I don't care what your definition of an anime is. If you want to create your own world that doesn't even need to be like cartoon related, this can work for it. There is a ton of templates in here. It has a really good point system for creating characters. And there's a ton of supplement material here to basically make it anything you want. Uh, and a huge portion of this, like a lot of the RPGs I like are narrative driven. This is another narrative driven one. This one here is super important for you to sit down as a group, I think, and create these characters, basically with the DM, making sure that they fit in with the story that you want to be in. So there is a lot of customization in this game. There's some examples of pay in the introduction and basically session zero is basically what it interluded to. And that is going to be that you're going to get down as a group. You're going to decide what genre do we want to play? What are we doing? So, and this gives some sort of just getting you into that idea. So it's collective creation. You're going to establish boundaries in the game. You're going to create what you think are going to be the benchmark leveling up of your characters. All the, basically, you're going to flesh out all this stuff and you're going to build up your character framework in here. Part of this process is going to be this BSM character quiz that you're going to take uh, as a player and this will help basically ask questions on what you feel you want to do with your character. This helps get you into that mood, get you into understanding what you need to do. You're going to choose templates throughout the game. Now let's put the templates first because templates, again, in this game, you're going to get points. It's probably going to be 150 to 200 points is probably in your area, but a big portion of it's probably going to be spent on your template. And this helps you get going because there, I would probably say you're going to be using templates for a while because you're going to have to be very well versed in the game, at least played it a couple times before you're going to be making a completely custom character. Also, you want your character to fit properly, so if you have a just all different stats that you want to make sure are in the right area. This game doesn't actually have that many stats, but they're they are very impactful throughout the game. And there's a lot, a lot of abilities that you can get in this game. And which we'll get into later after the templates, you can gain defects to get more points because there's a lot of things beyond templates that you're also going to pick some of the powers and stuff, some items you might want to start with, all sorts of things. And there is a lot of templates in here. And again, this is there's enough templates in here, ah, slime, uh, that you're going to probably find 
a template that you want. I'm shooting past these really quick. Uh, a template that you want for the game that will fit the game that you are playing. But like I said, there's a lot of stuff to spend points on. Now you only really have three stats in the game. You're gonna have your body, your mind, and your soul. Those are the three stats you have. Your body's, you know, your physical, your mind's your mental, and your soul is the one that's a little gray area. It's basically your willpower and determination, but basically those are the only three real stats you have in the game. And they're going to basically go from regular to so to like superhuman and you're not in this game you're not going to have like stat 99 you're going to have like four to ten ish areas for most stuff um but you can get up to uh 12 that's a maximum human potential on anything uh, you just you have to like you're as the GM if you're going to be jamming it you just you, you need to read through this you need to understand what you want to set as like limiters for your players for the characters they create and make sure it fits you're probably not going to make someone have like 12 abilities unless they have huge detriments and other stuff but that's up to you this is very open and you can do what you want you can also get uh Attributes, so there's all sorts of different attributes that you can get through the game. Everything has point costs in here. You can see the, the level cost in here. And there are a ton of attributes. Also, uh, if your templates has attributes in here, you can look in here and see what they, they actually do. And there is a ton of different attributes to pick from. Like I said, you can make up new ones, but this this has a lot, and like there's a, like I said, there's a ton of uh, supplemental books that add like more different attributes you can pick from. They fit in like specific genres to help you out more. There's more templates, but there is a ton of attributes in this game that you can pick from. You can also this is more about the customization in here, so you can. You can just customize so much for your characters. Defects. All right, so defects are important because you're like, oh, I have 200 points. I spent them all on this stuff, but I still want things. You can pick up defects to gain more points back to spend them on your character. Also, defects make a character more interesting, I think. So if you have a perfect character, that's not as much fun as having someone that might have some form of a defect like uh, they have a weak point or they're a magnet or they're marked or they have a nemesis or they have Achilles heel they have an awkward size they're hounded so there is a lot of things to pick from there's a this is a good section on a ton of different defects that you can get throughout the game uh, this one here is going to be how you're going to basically derive your bot, your uh, the combat values and stuff. So the combat values basically your body stat, your mind stat, and your soul stat added together plus three is your combat value. Also, these stats are very important. If any of them hit zero, you're pretty much knocked out. Depending on how you're playing, bad things are going to happen. So remember that. Uh, you get your health points, which is going to be your body stat plus your soul stat times five. That is your health. You have your energy points, which is going to be your mind stat plus your soul stat times five. And this one's going to go through uh, describing all the actions that you can take throughout the game. This is a really nice page on basically just giving you a chart on what your attack versus defense is going to be, uh, game rounds, uh, just really nice little player aid on there. And this is going to be on dice rolls and how you're going to, what target numbers you want to get. Like 24 is improbable because again, you're going to roll two six sided dice and you're going to add the appropriate trivia and that's your number. And this is basically giving you an idea on what 
sets you need for those. Stat rolls, skill rolls, and however many uh, stat and skill rolls you want to make is up to the GM. It depends on how much of a story driven it's going to be or um, technical it's going to be. So you don't have to. And uh, in the beginning of the book, there is a manifesto that basically says the point of this game is to have fun, be inclusive, and just enjoy it. And if it's ever not fun, just regroup, talk about it, and figure out what needs to change to make the game fun. Also, the art in this book is pretty cool. I like it. Here, items. So you can create items or get items. This is a huge second section on the different items you can have in the game, different weapons, different armors, different shields, tons and tons and tons of different items, different companions you can have throughout the game. Basically gives you a little templates on their values and stuff. And towards the end of this book also comes in with a multiplay uh, campaign to get to that more so much uh, on here. This is more about playing BSM. Uh, now, I would actually say that character creation is the biggest things for new players to do. The, um, the GM can get all this down and explain the basics for rolling and what you're doing for stats and stuff. And they, that's also explained in this game master section on here. So this doesn't, this isn't actually as daunting as it seems, but character creation can be a bit in this game. But if you're gonna set up a campaign, it's really important that you do this. Uh, like I said, the templates help out a lot. And it's just, like I said, the biggest portion. is anime multiverse, just gets you into doing some cool, ideas for campaigns and games and all sorts of fun stuff but basically this is just whatever you want it to be really good really great book and a really fun rpg let's go ahead back up to the table here and i'll give you my final thoughts on bsm role-playing game okay so that's a or Big Eyes, Small Mouth. It's a great RPG. I really like it a lot. Who's this RPG going to be for? This RPG is going to be for people who look to, like anime or cartoons, want to play it in a role-playing setting. This is a great, 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 great book for that. Almost every anime or cartoon trope is going to be in here. There's tons of templates to go off of. I will say that the most complex part of this game is going to be character creation. It's also the most important. That's where you're going to be, the meat of the game is going to be character development. You're basically going to be going through a story that is character focused. So it's the interplay between the different characters and their progression through whatever world you, you're going to be playing in. If now the gameplay or mechanics to the game are very simple so it's again like the bulk of this game is going to be character creation once you get that down you actually have the game down you can make completely custom characters but i highly highly i highly recommend using the templates until you get like intimately understanding of this bsm or besom system sorry so what I'm basically saying is the when you get down into the actual roles that you do they're very simple so small little chart will show you everything that you need in there the system they they link it to like a fate system this is actually a little more complex than the fate system and i think a lot better it's, i mean you, you do run on successes and stuff but this is a really really good or much better system i think than the fate system and I'm not the biggest RPG fan, but I really, really like story-focused games or character development-focused games. And I really think this one is one of the best for that area because this one is like 100% on developing the character. So as a GM, you have to understand that most of your efforts going to be in helping the players develop their characters and make meaningful stories based on the characters that were created, again, 
why that session zero is so important in this game is because of that. So that's my thoughts on Bassum. Thank you for watching.